Hello, it is Mrs. Edwards. It is time to do math and I love it. Today, by the end of this video, you are going to be able to create your own unit circle, putting those angle measures on there in terms of degrees and radians and then labeling the coordinates. You're gonna be able to do all of this with very little memorization. So let's get to it. If you were to Google unit circle, what you're gonna find are coordinates that are located on the x-axis, the y-axis, and then they put three coordinates in each one of those quadrants. Okay, what we're gonna do so that you don't have to memorize anything you don't already know is we're gonna simply put in some extra points. Now notice the location of these extra points I'm putting in. There's an extra one before and after the x-axis and the y-axis. Now you might be thinking, Edward, seriously, more points is gonna make it easier? But of course it is, because now look at this circle. Each one of these points are evenly spaced around the circle. So we end up with 24 slices that are exactly the same size. Now, I'd be willing to bet you already know how many degrees in a full circle. 360, of course. Okay, so now that we have 24 pieces that are all the same size, 360 divided by two dozen, 360 divided by 24 is 15. So that means each one of these points is 15 degrees apart. So let's just count by 15. 15, 15 plus 15 is 30, plus 15 is 45, plus 15 is 60, plus 15 is 75, plus 15 is 90. We continue counting by 15 degrees all the way around until we get back to 360 and we have all of the angles in terms of degrees. So what's the angle measure there? All right. That point, I'm gonna put in an extra point right between there so that it's broken into 15 degree increments. There's 180, go back 15, go back another 15, and so that angle measure is 150 degrees. Let's do one more like that. What's that angle measure? Well, I'm gonna put in that extra point so that we've broken it into pieces that are the same size. Right there's 180. So I'm gonna go forward 15 degrees, another 15 and another 15. So that angle measure is 225 degrees. This way I don't have to draw an entire unit circle just to figure out the angle measure at one of these coordinates. Now let's go ahead and put on the angle measures in terms of radians. I'm willing to bet you know that pi is the same thing as 180 degrees. Okay, so if we go over halfway there, 180 degrees, we are to one pi. Okay, so a half of a circle, 180 degrees, that is one pi. Here are those coordinates that you find on a published unit circle, but we're going to, of course, put on an extra point before and after the X and Y axis so that those points are equally spaced. So if going all the way over here is one pi, if I just come up to just this first point, what fraction of the way are you to pi? Well, there's 12 equal pieces, right? A dozen pieces to get over there to pi. So we are 1 12th of the way to pi. Here we're 2 twelfths of the way to pi, 3 twelfths of the way to pi. So notice what we're doing is we're just adding 1 twelfth of pi over and over again. Um, in the previous one, we added 15 degrees because each pi slice was worth 15 degrees. But here, each one is 1 twelfth of pi. So four twelfths of pi, five twelfths of pi. Okay, right there, how far are we to pi? We are six twelfths of the way to pi. In other words, halfway to pi. Okay, continuing to count by twelfths, we finally get to 12 twelfths of pi, which is one pi. We continue counting by twelfths. If I go all the way over here, 
We are now to 13 twelfths pi. The next one is going to be 14 twelfths pi. Continue counting by twelfths. And we finally get all the way around full circle to 24 twelfths pi. Now you may not recognize those um, angle measures just yet, but all we need to do is simplify. If we simplify 2 over 12, 2 fits into both 2 and 12, so we have 1 sixth of pi. 1 sixth of pi is written as pi over 6. Okay, the next one, we have 3 twelfths of pi. 3 fits in 2, 3 and 12, so we have 1 fourth of pi. 1 fourth of pi is pi over 4. Okay, the next one, 4 twelfths pi. 4 fits into 4, um, uh, excuse me, 4 fits into 4 and 12, and so that is a third of pi, in other words, pi over 3. There at the top, where 90 degrees would be, 6 twelfths is 1 half. Half of pi is pi over 2. 8 twelfths, 4 fits into 8 and 12, and so we end up with 2 thirds pi. We simplify each one of those fractions, and now you see those recognizable um, angle measures that you see on a published unit circle. But all we have done is counted by twelfths, 1 twelfth, 2 twelfths, 3 twelfths, 4 twelfths, and then simplified. Putting that in action, okay, what is that angle measure without recreating the entire unit circle? Okay, I'm going to do that same thing where I'm putting in an extra point. I already know that I'm halfway, so I'm 6 twelfths, so that's 7 twelfths, 8 twelfths. Okay, so if that one's 8 twelfths, simplify. 4 fits into 8 and 12, so we have 2 thirds pi, okay, or 2 pi over 3. All right, how about that angle measure? Well, right there is full circle, 24 out of 12, so let's just count backwards. 24 out of 12, 23 out of 12, 22 out of 12, 21 out of 12, and then just simplify, three fits into both 21 and 12, so we have seven fourths pi, or seven pi over four. Where is seven pi over six? Well, knowing that we just break it into one pi is into 12 equal pieces, let's rewrite this fraction out of 12. Multiply the top and bottom by two, so that would be 14 pi over 12, now, 14 out of 12 is more than one. Right there is 12 twelfths. Here's 13 twelfths. There's 14 twelfths. So that is the location of seven pi over six. All right, so the takeaway here is if you just think of your unit circle, put in um, an extra point, right, before and after the x-axis, then if you're going to work in degrees, then that first one is going to be counting by 15 degrees. And for radians, you're counting by pi over 12. If you already have an angle measure that's simplified, I would recommend just making it out of 12 so that you can count to know your location very quickly. When I said very little memorization, there is going to be some memorization in this explanation. If we were in class, I would derive for you the three fractions that you find as coordinates on the unit circle. But frankly, even after you know where they come from, you still have to memorize them because you're not gonna take the time to do that over and over again. But simplifying that as best we can we're going to put those three fractions that you see on the unit circle, root 1 over 2, root 2 over 2, and root 3 over 2. Okay, give you a moment here, just look at that for a second, for the pattern, because I want you to memorize these three fractions. If you use the unit circle often, you know these fractions by heart. Okay, now you're like, wait, root 1 over 2? Well, of course, root 1 is 1, so I can write that as 1 half. 
Okay, but for memorizing purposes, I want you just to see our numerators are just root one, root two, root three, all over two. All right, before we move on, I really need you to understand one more time that one half of these three fractions, one half is the smallest of the fractions, root two over two is the medium sized fraction, and root three over two is the largest of these three fractions. Now I have a unit circle in front of us. Let's go ahead and emphasize the fact that it is one unit, unit circle. The radius of this circle is one. So we can put on a few of these coordinates right away. Okay, the radius there is one. So we're going over one up zero to get to this point, we would go right or left zero up one. To get to this point, we'd go back one up zero. And to get to this point here, we would go right or left zero down one, so zero negative one. Okay, unit circle, the radius everywhere is one. Now for putting on the rest of the coordinates, we're gonna look at these three to get to this one, how far would you have to go over? See how I'm going over to the right a small amount? Well, that means the X is the small one. To go to this point right here, I would need to go over a medium amount Okay, and then to get to this point here at 30 degrees, I would need to go over a larger amount. Okay, I'm gonna do that one more time. Okay, so to go from the origin to plot those three points in quadrant one, I'm gonna go over a small amount, or I'm gonna go over a medium amount, or I'm gonna go over a large amount. Okay, how about for the y part of the coordinate? Okay, to get to this first one here at 30 degrees, I'm gonna go up a small amount. Okay, to get to this next one, I'm gonna go up a medium amount. And then to get to the next one, I'm gonna go up a large amount. Keeping in mind, small is a half, medium is root two over two, and large is root three over two. So that large comma small, that means I'm going over large, up small, right root three over two, up one half. Okay, that next one, I'm gonna go over a medium amount and up a medium amount. Well, that's root two over two, root two over two. Okay, then the coordinate right there, to get there, I need to go over a small amount and up a large amount. So that is over one half up root three over two. You can do this for any one of these coordinates. Okay, so let's just go with this one down here in quadrant three. If I wanna to get to that point, thinking of small, medium, and large. So from the origin to get to this point, I need to go back a large amount and down a small amount. Back large, down small. In other words, negative root three over two, comma, negative one half. Okay, let's do one more. Let's say I wanna get right there. How far do I need to go? Well, from the origin, I'm gonna go over a medium and down a medium. So in other words, I'm going forward root two over two, down negative root two over two. To get to any one of the coordinates, just think of it as going right or left, then up or down, of course, plotting any point, 
and then say, do I go over a small amount, a medium amount, or a large amount? And you've got your coordinates.